That's one good way to uh, clean the snow off of it. What do you think? Do you think that works well? I, that think seems, that, I think that works just fine. I think that's just fine. I think we can do the windshield now. Yeah, let's do the windshield It now. seems to be putting itself out too, so no worries. We don't even need the fire extinguisher. No fire extinguisher. That's the truth. I will wait until the hand of removal because that's what the OSHA rules is. All right, that's enough. Relax. Uh, can you get that lit? Uh, there we go. All right. Yo, what's going on there, guys? It's uh, Tuesday night. Well, we got one light. Got no light. And uh, we got some snow today. And it seems to have ice on to the truck. And while the heat doesn't work well, and the wipers don't seem to work well. Oh, look at that. The heat works a little bit. Anyways, we got to clear this off. We got a couple different options. You got that blower? Or where'd you go? It doesn't work? It doesn't work. Do you got a fire extinguisher? Is it ready for usage? Okay. <laughs> All right. So what are we going to do? We could clear the snow the traditional way. And I'm sure we'll be able to see. But what fun is that? We're going to melt it off with brake clean because this is the junk truck and that's what we do with the junk truck. We're about to set this on fire. We need it on the outside. It's going to roll with you though. I know, but we're about to set it on fire. So you need to have it ready so that when this starts to burn unexpectedly. That's, that's why it's going to roll with you though. <laughs> it stays closest to the fire. All right, guys. So uh, the truck doesn't want to make heat. And, uh, well, we don't want to wait for the snow to melt. So we're just going to take care of it ourselves. That's one good way to uh, clean the snow off of it. What do you think? Do you think that works well? I, that think seems... that, I think that works just fine. I think that's just fine. I think we can do the windshield now. Yeah, let's do the windshield It now. seems to be putting itself out too. So no worries. We don't even need the fire extinguisher. No fire extinguisher. That's the truth. I will wait until the hand of removal because that's what the OSHA rules is. All right, that's enough. Relax. Uh, can you get that lit? Uh, there we go. All right. So when you have a truck that won't make heat, you you gotta. You can, oh, whoa! Oh, baby. So we're cleaning off the windshield over here. Me and Beavis, Beavis, <laughs> got it down. Got it out. Oh my God. We got the neighbors across the street looking at us, going, "What the fuck is going on? You're out of your goddamn." Look, listen. Let's go to the other side already before it's too late. Out of control. Now nah, come over here. Come on, get over here. Light it. Light it. Give, give it a little something. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Let's get this side. Where's that lighter? Bring a lighter. Let me light my junk off your junk. All right. There we go, folks. <laughs> Shout out to Neutral Drop. I've been watching them a spray. lot lately. All right. <laughs> just, just spraying. More, more. Just cleaning off the dash. Cleaning off the windshield of the vehicle, the burnout truck. We're gonna go blow this up now. Uh, we're gonna go blow this, that's it. The can's empty. All right, we're gonna go blow this thing up now. Or at least see, if it survives, I'm gonna keep it. If it doesn't, then we're just gonna junk it. But uh, that's, that's how you clean your windshield off if a vehicle doesn't wanna produce heat, is you just use a $5 can of gum out no faces were filmed in the making of this video and we got a plan you know what i'm not even gonna tell you what it's gonna include right here next to the connecticut east river it's like the new york east river but in connecticut we got some beautiful ducks floating around got some nature across some snow coming down and we got the trucks we got the truck so i just bought this truck a couple of months ago a couple of days ago what am i saying it feels like months i bought it last week for six hundred dollars i didn't even check the dipstick and i bought this thing and uh it seems to run pretty good but it needs some durability testing we're gonna do a biathlon tonight possibly even a triathlon if it makes it that far to test the durability of this truck so how are we gonna do it i don't know let's figure it out get over here we're gonna figure it out Durability test number one, the donut. Here we are in an open parking lot in an American job center. Probably shouldn't put the address here. 
This is my buddy's building, if anybody asks. I know the owner. Durability test one, the donut. Oh, let me get out of this man's way. More! Give her the onion! Give it all the onion! <laughs> yes, it will go, ooh, a little driftage, a little fishtails. Ooh, tremendous. Up, oh, up. Oh. What a vehicle. I've already not regretted my $600 purchase. So we have the Posi rear end doing donuts on ice. Ooh, she's throwing the tail like a proper burnout truck. Out of, out of control. Out of control. Oh, don't get too close to the tiger. It'll bite you. Durability test number one. The donut. Oh, it's doing one-leggers. It's doing two-leggers. Let that posse hit it. Mmm, it's, it's the smell, the, the fresh smell of donuts in the air. Oh my God, this is too good. What do you think? How long should we do donuts for before we say it passed the test? I think it passes. Get over here! Get over here! No faces. No faces. It oh, made it. That was too much fun. Dude, yeah, that was tremendous. <laughs> that was absolutely tremendous. I don't have a New York accent, but when I have that much fun, it just comes out. <laughs> Durability test number one, the donut. I believe, uh, I believe we passed with flying colors. On to durability test number two. Got a new light. Oh, it's off. The engine oil temp light came on. It went back off, so I'm assuming we're good. I like these, this is a 94, the pre-OBD2 standard. The check engine light just turns on and off when it needs to. It doesn't stay on like a bitch. Careful, careful. There's a nice vehicle there. We must be careful of the nice vehicle. Oh, whose vehicle is that? Oh, that's that? your vehicle, bud. Oh, just the pole right there. You're just gonna smash some stuff, no big deal. Oh, you're gonna, you're, oh, oh, you risk taker. Oh, man, okay. Stop the vehicle! Durability test number two. Complete. Hasn't even started yet. Uh-oh, we're about to start durability test number two. And there seems to be an issue. Oil pressure seems to be an issue. It goes away when you rev it, so I think that's what we're gonna have to do. We're gonna have to rev this thing until the oil pressure comes back. All right, here's the plan. We have a fire extinguisher. We have a truck. Do you know why we have a fire extinguisher? We have a fire extinguisher due to uh, uh, durability safety, issues. No, because safety is our number one concern around here. We are only concerned about our safety and the safety of all the people around us. We and found we these... We are concerned about the safety of the people around us, but we are concerned about our safety in general. <laughs> that is right. We want to be safe at all times. Ladies and gentlemen, keep your hands inside their pockets and away from your dick. Ladies, gentlemen, and concubines, that's why we have this fire extinguisher. It's a 10-pound fire extinguisher person in the shop told me this is strong enough to take on the whole entire fire car and I said that's right what I want. A translation would be he went to the counter and he said I need a good fire extinguisher and the guy told him he said hey this one would put out a car fire. He's like tremendous let me get two of them. Durability test number two. Get in the truck. No faces. Oh no faces. Check the verses no curses. Durability test number two. Check the verses no curses. Get over here. Get the check the verses no, no curses. Faces. We will start from the back. I'm, I, I hotboxed it. I hotboxed the truck, ladies and gentlemen. I couldn't breathe. I can't breathe. I wow, that's what 55 miles an hour looks like. Oh, just a couple of cords. Just a couple of cords showing, no big deal. Durability test number two. Complete. I believe this passes.
want to make sure that it's durable. It's got all kinds of lights on, but it's got oil pressure at, at speed, so that's all we need. There we go. And with one headlight and posi traction, it's all you need. $600. This is a new shop truck. <laughs> no paces! I think that was durability test number three. We have no oil pressure at idle. Durability testing once more. Ooh, it starts. Ooh, and it has oil pressure at idle. Ah, these Dodges cry wolf. Well, wipers? Wipers. We have young blood in the truck. No faces. No faces. We have drive. Oh, loyal. All right. Driftage. Oh yeah. Don't hit the yellow poles. Do not hit the yellow poles. Move away from the yellow poles. I have a vehicle watching me. Who would do such a thing? Oh. So basically you gas it and you hold on and you hope that we don't hit anything that'll make it flip. And, and what you do is you want to just get that nice perfect circle. I mean, if you, modu if you modulate it, what do you think? What do you think? Think we can do it? If we, if you modulate the gas on and off, one second, one second, we're doing fire down to over I think we get one test before you make a video. Go backwards again. Let's, get, let's give him one test before we make a video. Okay, so keep on, keep just on just do back. it. Just go for it. Don't hit us. Oh, the engine does not sound good. Oh, it does not sound good. We gotta cut it. That motor sounds bad. Cut it! Cut it! The motor is broken! Alright guys, we're back where it all started. We're back at the shop. I hear the water pump squealing or squeaking. Um, but I don't hear any rod knock. Which is awesome. And it seemed to drive the same as before. It was overheating a little bit. And the oil light is on. It needs oil. For sure it blew the oil out of it. Guys, just started up this uh, this piece of junk. Doesn't seem to run too bad. Doesn't seem to run too good either. Uh, some of that is white smoke. Some of it's blue smoke. So a little bit of condensation and a whole lot of burnt oil. But. Oh, that, that happened. This used to be red. Now she's black. Probably the nicest panel on the truck now. I got to replace on the one on the other side. But uh, for right now, I'm just letting the thing warm up. Let's see where it's got. What's going on here? Let's see. We got oil pressure. We got oil pressure. What else we got here? We're charging. It's still cold. Vents work. Oh, I smell burnt oil. Oh, it's because I probably spilled some on the... Uh... Oh, right in the ketchup. Oh, that's pretty good. I just, I just realized this thing's got 188,000 miles. I, uh, when I bought it, I did not even look. But it's pretty clean. It's got almost no rust underneath that's uh some pretty hot stuff there yeah it's it's smoking off the uh i just yeah that's that's fine i just dumped some uh oil in it i'm gonna let it warm up doesn't sound too bad let it get to temp. Here's that bad fender here. So 
The other fender was this color, but not crushed. This is just crushed. And there's no bumper there. So I gotta find one of those in a junkyard. Uh, and then, I think it's kind of minty. Let's see, is it leaking anything from underneath? Oh yeah, just a smidge. Nothing too bad. Leaks oil, leaks transmission fluid, but it starts and runs. I'm gonna let it warm up uh, while I get some other stuff. You can see uh, oh, just a little bit of rubber. It's got that posi rear end. I had to double check on that right away. So I got Big Red here today. It's a daily driver, but uh, it's getting some upgrades. I'm gonna be putting new control arms on it and uh, lower ball joints. Well, it's gonna get a ball joints, patrol arms, sway bar linkages, a couple of other things here and there today. And then, so these tires came off the Firebird and uh, they're the right back spacing. They're not super rusty. Well, they're rusty, but not super rusty. So I'm gonna clean on them at some point in the next week and paint them up and then get new tires put on it. Uh, and over here, I kept going back and finding more and more of these uh, poverty caps. Just, just minty old poverty caps. Chevy, Buick, Oldsmobile, whatever that is. So, all right, I'm gonna get the garage open, get this inside, and I'll show you the parts I got for it. Well, I uh, did some stuff. Don't mind the mess of tools everywhere, but uh, yeah, show you uh, show you where I got up to so far. Oh, I'm just fat. Don't mind me. Nope, not a party. There we go. So I got the uh, spindle off. That's down there. Caliper sitting over to the left. Tie rod just dangling here. CV axle propped up by the sway bar, and now. I gotta replace on this lower ball joint and this upper control arm. And uh, yeah, it only took me about two hours to get here. So hopefully this is gonna be a smooth process. I'm lying, this is gonna be terrible. <laughs> Honestly, it's my first time uh, doing ball joints. Um, first time getting this deep in, into the suspension on the truck. So I'm not, I'm not saying it's so bad. It's really not. It just takes a lot of time. You're fighting a lot of rust. I mean, the ball joints are just completely, completely caked on this. So that's going through everything. It'll get done. So just a quick update. That's where I'm holding. Uh, I'm going to get back to work. I'm going to push this ball joint out, push a new one in, change this control arm out with a new one. And uh, hopefully buttoning this thing up will take a lot faster than uh, taking it apart did. But uh, I'm not too hopeful. I might have to drive another car home. So, uh, so good news and bad news. Good news is I'm done for the night. Bad news is it's because I have the wrong parts. So I got the upper control arm in. You can see that. That's sitting in there mocked up. It's not tightened down yet. I have to uh, make sure the Little guides on the side line up with my old lines. I got to clean up the bolts put some thread lock on it So that those don't go anywhere uh, But that this seems to be the right fit and then uh, but down here which, uh, hmm. Give me a second. Let me grab this piece so this is the new lower ball joint pretty bad quality it doesn't have a grease zerk on it but anyways i'm supposed to be able to pressure fit that in there i'm not supposed to be able to just slide it in i did a little bit of research which I probably should have done beforehand that there's a 45 millimeter and a 47 millimeter spindle not spindle forged control arm and uh apparently i have the 47 size so i gotta go to the parts store in the morning that kind of leaves me stranded with the truck blown apart day two of the build here we are i got the driver's side buttoned up place is a mess right now uh so last night i got as far as popping the old ball joint off on the right side and realized that i had ordered 
uh, the wrong ball joints, or well, the kit that I got from this company, it was just the wrong size. There was a 45 millimeter and a 47 millimeter. I uh, needed the 47 millimeter. So this morning, got up, went to the parts store first thing, uh, and grabbed the 47 millimeters from O'Reilly's. Uh, nice price too. And uh, yeah, so I got the right side bot buttoned up, working on the left side now. I knocked all the scale and rust off of this with a wire brush. Um, painted it. I'm going to replace this shock, so I'm not even going to bother doing anything to it. This shock's going to come out soon, but I just knocked as much rust off as I could. Spray painted with some Rust-Oleum. Hopefully give it a couple of uh, layers of protection here. Uh, so while that's sitting and drying a little bit, there are the shims and bolts that hold the upper control arm on. This one I got all the rust and scale knocked off of it. I don't know if the camera will show you, but this one, it's got 20 years worth of grime on it. And uh, yeah, I'm just gonna basically throw it in the vise, hit it with the trusty wire wheel, and clean it up. This is the uh, bolt for the top of the shock mount. And that's basically where I'm holding now, just wasting a little bit of time with that. Then I gotta come back and struggle to put the new ball joint in it. And when I say struggle, I mean, this is, I think it's the hardest thing I've ever done on a vehicle is just hand tightening on a ball joint on this car, on this truck. Definitely one of the most challenging things. It's like a full row movement. Can't use the impact drill on it, it says. It's just a full row, all in probably 20 minutes of fighting it. But it's fine, once it gets finally seated, button everything back up and actually want to drive this truck home because I was driving the Dodge I just bought. And uh, I mean, I'm not worried about it breaking down per se, but I'm worried about getting pulled over because the thing is just, it's just rough as could be. You know, one light missing on one side and plate's not really a good plate on it. What can you do? Shop's a mess. Hopefully this thing steers better. I found a problem with the brand new searing box I bought uh, that I gotta address sooner than later that the Pitman arm I put on, as t I torqued that bolt as tight as it'll go and there's still a little bit of movement from the Pitman arm, which is a little scary. But uh, <coughs> yeah, I'm gonna have to go buy a new Pitman arm, pull the steering box out at some point in the next couple weeks, put that on, probably get some washers just so I can make sure it is fully, fully seated on the uh, steering gear. And yeah, this front end should be pretty good to go. I gotta get an alignment, gotta buy some fresh meats on the front so they're even, get this aligned, and then uh, it's time to work on the rear axle after this. Finally get that done. And I figure if I get that both done, then I'll start looking for a fresh bad bed for this. Uh, pick something up, you know, with no rust on it. <clears throat> pull the bed off and start the rust and scale removal from the frame and I might just end up restoring this whole thing I mean the last thing I'll do is rebuild the engine um, but this year I plan to rebuild the motor in this truck rebuild the motor in the Firebird because it's still the original engine and there's no reason to get rid of that Firebird sitting right here just looking pretty I um, guess I could put this in here I'm gonna record a full video I got to take this front clip off and then pull the motor out but I got the uh, valve covers off this baby and uh, right away noticed that this valve, this rocker rather, is loose. And you can see it's backed off the stud. So it makes me believe that somebody was in here messing around with it. Um, but what I don't understand is that one's backed off. All of these are still tight, but then if you come over here, it's got a loose lifter here. It's a lot of lash in that. It's got a, a, a loose uh, rocker as well here. So I think the cam, these flat tappet cams, were notorious for eating themselves. I think that's what happened. Uh, the mystery continues, you know? It looks like it has a bent tie rod. It looks like it has a bunch of issues in the engine. Um, I just, I don't know until I have the whole thing apart, but definitely rebuildable definitely going to try to rebuild it. I've been researching this. I found some guys online who have some really good tutorials for this exact motor out of 69 Firebird. Um, 
There's a, uh, a like a cloth seal used around the rear. The rear main seal on these is a rope. That's what the word is. A real funky looking fibrous rope that you sit in there and you got to cut the ends off of it when you go to seal the, uh, when you go to seat the crank in permanently. And uh, I'm going to look to see if I can avoid doing that. I was just watching the videos on it. Like I totally understand that that was the technology of the day, but I'm hoping there's some aftermarket uh, fix instead of having to do that. Other than that, relatively simple. If it's the original engine, might get it bored 20 over, 30 over, just to make a little bit more power. Uh, i probably clean up the cylinder walls that I'm going to assume have some rust on them. Uh, and that's uh, it's about the about it for now, you know. Got to get the new floors in it one of these days. Got to get all the glass this thing pulled down. I mean, it's ready to come out. I'm just not interested in dealing with that yet. And, uh, yeah, so this is going to be a drag car. Working on trying to get a title for it no registration no title it's not going to be the easiest thing but I'll, I'll get it done there's some paperwork here in connecticut you could file to get it and uh yeah so i figure i'm going to finish off these uh mounting bolts these uh shims and bolts for the upper control arm and uh by then the paint should be dry enough for me to throw everything back on get the lower ball joint squeezed in there and I want to go home. It's about midnight already, so I'll probably go home around 1.30 in the morning. Got the ball joint and upper control arm on the left side. All buttoned up, wheels on. Time to play some uh, car shuffle. Get the driveway clear so I could get out. It's about 1 o'clock in the morning now. Uh, I think I started at 6. So altogether about 8 hours to do all this. And... Uh, I am excited to go home. So for now, I'm going to check out. I'll be back with you guys in the morning.